I was on the call yesterday and someone asked me about change and why is it so damn hard to change? And I said simply, it's because we don't understand that change happens at two levels. Two levels, not one, but two. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Yellow Chair Podcast with X, where we deep dive into the stories that drive our lives. Hey, family, let's face it. Anything that we want in life is going to require change. Because if we don't change, we're going to continue to get the same thing that we've always gotten. So whether we're trying to escape a bad habit or meet our next level or rise into our potential, it's going to come down to our capacity to change, which leads to the million dollar question of why is it so damn hard to change? And I would argue that it comes down to not having the right strategy for change and understanding that's right, that change takes place at two levels. Right. Two levels. The first level is a instantaneous level. It's the easiest level to change is at the mental and emotional level. Right. If you mentally come up against some new information, you can change in a heartbeat just like that. I remember about 18 years ago or so I was reading a passage in a book about uh, meat eating and how our bodies aren't well adapted to it. And the information was compelling at the time. And I couldn't forget that information. I changed just like that mentally. Boom. Forever. Like it was it was sewn in, at least at that time. And the same thing for you. When you come up against a new idea, new information, you can change mentally in a heartbeat. And then also, if we think about it at an emotional level, emotional change can happen just like that. A high degree of emotion, right? An intense emotion can change how we feel about a thing just like that. For example, I have a friend 250 pound man's man. Like he's a man's man, right? This strong, big, burly guy, but he's scared of toy poodles, toy poodles. I'm like, dude, you, you scared of toy poodles? Like for real? He's like, look, yes. I was like, why, why are you, dude, you, you, you can lift a house. Why are you scared of toy poodles? You could just kick it. And it would like, like, I, I didn't understand it. He was like, listen, when I was eight, I was walking down the street. And out of this junkyard of all places, this toy poodle came out and it bit me and it wouldn't let go. And nobody was around and it was just yanking on my pants and biting me and scratching me. And I, I just I've just been scared of them ever since. Right. That's a toy poodle. That's that's an emotional experience. <laughs> Change you in a heartbeat just like that. But here's the thing about these instantaneous change that happens mentally and emotionally. It's surface level. It's not holistic. It's not enduring. It's not enough to create, per se, new and better outcomes in our life. Right. We've changed in terms of how we think about a thing and how we feel about a thing. But we haven't done the next level work of, say, making it permanent, making it holistic. And what does that look like? Well, the next level of change happens at a physical and spiritual level. You see, we have this thing I call the MEPS map, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. Right. Mentally is how we think about a thing. Emotional is how we feel a thing. Physical is the actual body, the mechanics of our body, cellular DNA, like how our brain fires. Right. Having the, the mental connections to where there's no friction between what we feel and what we think, meaning it's physically sewn into the fabric of our being. So if we use an example, a lot of us, for example, we want to be healthier. We want to lose weight. Right. And we can come up against information about, you know, being healthy and how it leads to a better life and this, that and the other. And we believe it. So we've mentally changed. We can emotionally be connected to the idea of, you know, looking a certain way, feeling a certain way. And we really want it. Right. But we haven't physically sewn it in. So when we set this new goal, we, 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 we want it to be permanent. We want it to be fully integrated, but we haven't done the work to physically sew it in. So what does that look like? Well, in this example, physically sewing it means simply we are in the habit of routinely doing the things that are in alignment with this idea of what it is we're trying to accomplish. So we 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 physically sewn in and have muscle memory around exercising, running and walking. We physically done the activity at a routine basis consistently where we're, we're eating the right food. So we we we're in tune to what it means to cook them. 
We're in tune to what it means to go to the grocery store and look for them. We're in tune to what it feels like to eat them. In other words, we're physically immersed into a thing to where we have the habitual patterns at a physical level that happen. So we're mentally and emotionally, not just intellectually and feeling at a surface level, but we're physically embodied into this idea. And that requires more than just a surface level mental and emotional feeling. We have to do a thing. We have to routinely put ourselves into a position so that we can develop the physical connection to a thing. And that takes time. That takes time. Physical manifestation takes time, whereas mental and emotional happens just like that. So the mental and emotional side is basically the seed But we have to plant that seed. We have to cultivate that seed. It has to take root. It takes time. It takes the right nutrients. It takes the right thing. It's vulnerable and oftentimes not protected by the elements. So oftentimes what do we do? We do that first level of change, but we don't protect and nurture that seed. We don't give it the time it needs to physically take root, which then leads to the next level or the secondary side of this second level of second level of change which is spiritual. At a spiritual level, we're talking about it becoming fully and wholly sown into who you are at an identity level. You see the world through the lens of someone, not who is trying to lose weight in this example, but as someone who is an athlete. You know, an athlete doesn't try necessarily to lose weight. Their their lifestyle, how they think, what they feel, what they do is just all about being an athlete. They identify with it, and therefore, it, losing weight probably isn't even part of the equation. It's about being the best athlete you can, so they think, feel, and do athletic shit, which by consequence, or as a consequence, helps them to lose weight or not to be overweight. So it's sewn into the very fabric of who they are, meaning they identify with it. So if I was to stay with this analogy of a seed and cultivating the seed, when you embrace it and connect it at a spiritual level, which takes even more time. You are now producing the fruit. You went from just a seed at emotional, mental, emotional level to full blown fruit, right? It germinated, took root, planted, tree grew, and now it's producing fruit. So let's take an apple. You have an apple. When you crack open the apple, what's inside? More seeds. That's what it means to cultivate and to create culture. You've cultivated so now to where when you it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, when you crack open the fruit of that culture, there's more seeds that are exactly the same to reproduce and manifest the same exact thing. That's the power of culture or said differently. That's the second level of change where it's become holistically embodied and baked in at a physical and spiritual level. So this gives us hints and clues as to how to change and what's required for change. We can't simply do mental and emotional change. That's the seed. We need it because if we don't have mental and emotional juice and fuel, we won't endure to create the physical and spiritual connection to change. So it's important that we have the mental and emotional, but we have to do the physical and the spiritual to give us the time required to grow into, to manifest and to embody and to create the new neural pathways in our mind Right. Body and soul so that that change becomes holistic and powerfully driving. So how do we do that? Let's summarize it this way. Let's wrap this up real quick. We want to maximize the time that we spend thinking, feeling and doing of a thing. And how do we do that? There are three R's I want you to write down. We need routines, rituals and reinforcements. Routines. Let's talk about it. Routines are basically things that you can do consistently Don't require a lot of heroics, don't require a lot of effort, but you do them day in and day out like clockwork. Very simple thing. So let's go back to weight loss. My wife and I, we walk every day. We walk every day. It doesn't take much effort to walk. And as a result of doing this consistently, we've done the power of compounding and the power of doing something over and over and over again. She's down five pounds. I've lost 4% body fat, like by walking. So you need routines, things that you do day in and day out without thinking about them. They're simple. They're easy. Low bar minimums don't require a lot of heroics. On the opposite extreme, we need some rituals. 
Rituals are the intense side of the equation. This is where you do go all out, where you give effort, where you emotionally pump up the power, pump up the power, right? That song, I forget what it is, but I felt it, right? You ritualize it and you give everything you have to it. So for example, my wife and I, we do intensity twice a week, right? Something like that. So your intensity isn't done every day. It's done ritualistically as a way to really engage and push. The reason why this is important is because it will expand your capacity to be more consistent, number one. And number two, it will keep the emotional juices flowing. Consistency takes time to work. But when we become intense from time to time, we can feel the push and pull of our own effort and we can really get engaged emotionally into a thing. Also, like I said, it expands our capacity to be consistent. If I go out and run one day, when I go back to walking, I'm going to be like, huh, walking is pretty easy. I can walk a little bit faster or a little bit further. If we put this into the professional or business perspective, I work with clients and I say, hey, your routine is five calls a day. That's it. But on Fridays, we're going to do the baller, you know, baller, a boiler room Fridays where we call 25 people, two hours, put music on, get emotionally into it and go all out. Right. It's exhausting, but we go all out. Then afterwards, we go back to the routine. We rest, we recuperate. We feel good about it. Now, five calls is a lot, lot easier. You get it? So we need routines and rituals to shorten the curve and to really integrate and allow us to go further, faster. Now, last but not least, we need reinforcement. Reinforcements are the things that are required because we all will fall down. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, we all fall down. So we need reinforcements, basically a protocol of if, then, else. When you're falling, you're going backwards, you've lost your momentum, you're in a pit, you need some things to reinforce you. So, for example, if you're trying to lose weight and your routine is in play and your rituals are all in play, right? Don't burn yourself out of rituals and intensity. Do them sporadically, strategically, well spaced out. But you fall down. Well, what's your reinforcement? All right. When I fall down, I call my workout buddy. Yeah. Another reinforcement. I post my weight every week uh, publicly to reinforce the idea and to create some accountability. Awesome. If I fall down and I don't do this, then I'm going to have to run twice on this day or I'm going to have to pay this to charity. Some very simple rules to reinforce and to get you out of your skid, out of your downturn. That's all you need. For example, uh, in my life, when I'm falling into my pit, you know, let's say I'm hearing no, I'm not landing clients. I'm not growing my business. I'm like, I suck. You know, that whole deal. My ego is all out front, fear and anxiety. I got to go back and revisit my storybook where I have hundreds of stories from people who said I've had impact in their life. I got to review that. I got to practice drill, rehearse that story. And I instantly feel reinvigorated. I instantly come out of my pit and be like, holy shit. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at this stuff. Let me, let me, let me move on. What if I didn't have that reinforcement? What would have happened? I would have continued to go backwards. I would have continued to fall off my, my, my horse. My routine would have been wrecked. I wouldn't have had the fuel to be ritualistic and intense. And I would have fell into a pit. And so many of us do that. And that's why we can't stick with it long enough to create physical and spiritual change at a holistic level. So, We need routines, rituals, and reinforcement protocols in order for us to create change at the highest level possible. You do this, you'll have your MEPS map sewn in, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual, where you start to identify and create the fruit that becomes a self-perpetuating seed that keeps the thing going, the routine, rituals, and reinforcement. All right, so change Is it hard? Doesn't have to be. But we understand the right strategy to apply so that we can lead our story. I'm out. Hey, fam, thanks again for joining me in the yellow chair. I want to invite you to go even deeper to take this to the next level by pulling out your phone and texting me at 800-425-2095. That's 800 
425-2095. That's my direct number. Type in the word yellow chair. And when you text me, you'll be joining my X Factor weekly insider community where I send out resources to help you to continue to storify your life and to lead your story. So don't miss that opportunity. 800-425-2095. Thanks again for joining me here in the yellow chair. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share these podcasts. We're trying to change 100 million people's lives and you're a part of that. So thank you again and I see you in the next yellow chair. I'm out.